Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benin here with Israeli News Live, and I hope my voice will hold out for this recording. Uh, of course, my wife and I, and our daughter, in fact, as well, are all trying to recover from this horrific sickness that we've all been through, and uh, it's been a doozy. But this was something that I was, I got an amazing insight on that I wanted to share with you uh, just before, in fact, just before I got sick, I was actually uh, involved in the video that my wife was doing there that we put up there on our channel here, Israeli News Live, at least a 30 second clip that takes you over to iConnectFX.com where you can see the video in its entirety. Uh, as well as it's in its entirety over on Yana's channel there. Um, uh, oh goodness, I forget. <laughs> I'm totally blank on the, the broadcast that she's on over there. But at any rate there, you, you guys have seen it in the, the uh, description before. What I got into though when we were talking on that, on one of the points there was the Tower of Babel. Uh, the tower that Nimrod built. And I wanted to bring out some interesting points here about this. And something that I had never thought about before is that what happened at Nimrod literally had to be repaired. Um, and I'm really... Some of you that are listening, and I think I even mentioned it on my wife's channel or on her broadcast there when she had me on as a guest, you really need to think deep on this, right? I'm going to tell you this, but if you really go deeper than what I'm telling you, you'll really capture something that you just would not believe. So let's take a look at this. Cush begot Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Of course, mighty is the word gibor. Gibor is also the word used for giants, by the way. He was a mighty hunter, a gibor Said, before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. And beginning of his kingdom was Babel. So we know that Nimrod, according to Genesis chapter 10, started Babel. Chapter 10, verse 10. And Eric and Achad and Kalani and the land of Shinar, out of the land went forth Ashur and builded Nineveh and Rehoboth, Ir and uh, Kala. Now, all this kind of matters anyway because there is a lot of belief that Nimrod may end up being the Antichrist in this day, resurrected, the, 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 the image that's made to live again, right? And then if you notice some of the other names, the Jebusites, the Hivites, the Canaanites, see, all of these, all these names get associated with him. And of course, these are where the Nephilim bloodlines were at to begin with. Uh, the Zidonians, for example, as well. All these different ones on here, right? And then you get into Genesis chapter 11. And we'll read here verse 3 going down. And they said one to another, come let us make brick. Burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build a city and a tower with its top in heaven. I find this all very suspect to begin with. In Hebrew here, you have Ve'amru, uh, Chaba, excuse me. I can't really see with these glasses at that distance from the computer. Nineveh, uh, Lanu, Ir, okay, Ir, not Hayir either, just Ir, a city, Umigdal, Ve Rosho. Okay, it's not, they translate that on there, a tower in its top in heaven, which would be fine, but it's literally its head would be Beshemaim in heavens or in the heavens and as you go on to read where this top in heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad about the face of the whole earth well there was already this fear that they're about to be scattered about the entire earth why why was there a fear that they would be scattered about the entire earth 
And what is this tower, this city, where the tower itself, the the very head of its uh, of this of this tower, would be up into the heavens? Now. I've said to you before, let me let me continue on reading down and then we'll come back to this. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people. And we come on down. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is what they begin to do. And now nothing will be withholden from them which they purpose to do. Come, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, and they left off uh, to build to build the city. And therefore was the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confounded the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now, I find it very interesting that one, they knew that this was going to happen, that they were going to be scattered upon all the earth. They wanted to make this tower that the head of it could reach into the heavens. And so Yahweh comes down and he sees this and he says nothing could would be withholden from them because they're all of one language. Think about that. So come down, let us go there and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And so that confusion was brought about. And this is where we get, as they say now, babbling, or you babble, you babble too much. Uh, it's where you speak and you don't understand each other. Now, if there was a time in history, and we already see it plain as day in the Bible, that the language of the earth becomes confounded to where it, man had all one language, and now they're dispersed through all the entire earth, and suddenly they can't even understand each other anymore. Just little groups here and there, and you know they could understand, you know, whatever this little group knew their language, and you know maybe that's how you ended up with, you know, with English and Hebrew and and uh, you know Chinese and and you know whatever else you might have out there, French, etc. Which some of these languages may have evolved over time as well. But uh, nonetheless, we ended up with all these different types of languages on the earth. And so, what came to me when we were doing this video the other day was that there was a correction of this event. There was a restoration. In fact, if you look at Zephaniah, what does Zephaniah say? Now, it looks like if you look at verse 8, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I might assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy." All right, so we read that, and it looks like that there we're going to have this scenario at the same time we have the next scenario. For then will I return to the peoples a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. For then I will turn the people. Or it could be because then. Key could be the word because. Because then I will turn to the peoples El Amim 
to the peoples, Shefa Buach Lekore Kulum Beshem Yehovah. A pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia shall they bring my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, as mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings wherein you have transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of you you proudly exalted ones, and you shall no more be haughty in my holy mountain. And I will leave in the midst of you an afflicted and poor people, and they shall take refuge in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceit tongue be found in their mouth, for their feed and lie down, excuse me, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has, made, has taken away thy judgments, he has cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of you, and you shall know. You shall not fear evil any more. And that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear you not, O Zion, let not your hands be slack. You see, that pure language where they all come back to it, where did it happen at? Well, let's look at the book of Acts again, chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Now that word that I left unhighlighted, Jews, is actually Judeans. That's the way it's translated properly. Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and there were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Perithians, Medes, and Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, or Judeans and proselytes. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What means this? Of course, you know, the others are going to be mocking, and these men are full of new wine, etc. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing that this is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which this prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit, Upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Dream dreams, excuse me. All right? Now, the point being, though, was a language was restored. 
It's not what necessarily they were hearing, excuse me, they were speaking, you know, they spoke in Gal Galilean, right? But they could all understand in their own native tongues what was being said. It was a greater miracle on the day of Pentecost than when the world had one language unto themselves. And you remember, God came down and he said, well, better be careful. They know all this one language. Nothing will be withheld from them. Well, think about it. Jesus came and restored back the word of God. And by the way, too, if you remember, in Genesis, let's see, um, Wait a minute. No, I think it's over in Zephaniah there. Yeah, it's talk, it talks about Israel. The how, yeah, the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. And there again, that's right down like I've told you so many times before. Verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. You see all Zephaniah fulfilled in this passage as well. A pure language was poured out upon the earth. And a pure hearing was made to receive that pure language. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That was to the house of Israel. A whole restoration all the way back to everything that happened was taking place. Everything that was lost at the Tower of Babel was restored on the day of Pentecost. And what's interesting, let me see if I can just find this real quick. Nothing shall be, and I think that's the way we can maybe pull it up. Okay, let me try it a different with Holden. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the scripture how that we could get that there. Let's see. With, let's just try withholding. Amos, let's see. And also I have withholding. No. No, 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 no. Well, we can just use a simple one. All things are possible. Right? What did Jesus say? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, Which men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You see, when Christ came, He was the restoration of the Word of God. He was the fulfillment of that Word. And so therefore, something I'd never thought about in my life, that you think about the Tower of Babel and the languages being confound, or the language being confounded to multiple languages, well, there's got to be a restoration of that. You can't have a confounding and not a restoration. Now, today they're trying to teach you in this movement for this one world religion that there's going to be a pure language. And they're trying to say it's going to be Hebrew. And that they basically want the whole world, I guess, to know Hebrew. I don't know. I don't know if that's their answer to that or what. But basically everything being taught from Hebrew, that's not it. The pure language is the fact that when the Spirit of God can speak in one language and the men and women can hear and understand in their own language the same thing you speak, whether it's Galilean, English, French, Hebrew, whatever it might be, that's the miracle. That's the purity. I'm Stephen Benoon. 
I trust it's a blessing to you tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for bearing with me. My voice doesn't last very long right now. And I just want to thank you for for your support for this broadcast. And uh, and as you can see at the top of the screen there, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website. If God lays it upon your heart to want to support the work we do, we do appreciate your help. Oh, and by the way, on our website is Jana's videos too. Uh, let's see here. Genesis 3 fulfilling in the now. Ooh, now that's one I did there right before we got before we got sick here. And then uh, oh, and by the way, too, listen, there's a lot of comments that were not very nice. Uh, Sister Elizabeth was trying to help us out. And she posted up a little post there to let you know we were sick. She didn't know what to write on there. And some people took that wrong. Um, you know, she is a precious sister. And uh, we removed it and put up a different post up there because uh, we don't go around claiming to be, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. You understand. Uh, but let me see real quick, though. I wanted to just see real quick here. Let's see. Israel's new covenant. Yes. If you look on the website there, you can see any of these videos, too, on our website in their entirety as well. But if God lays it upon your heart, you want to support the broadcast, please do. Uh, Stephen, uh, excuse me, IsraeliNewsLive.org and Danoon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. And also, um, uh, what else did I want to make sure I mention to you guys real quick? Uh, oh, uh, Patreon, too. Don't forget uh, Patreon. Or I'll try to put that in the description for you there. I will be working on a couple of videos for Patreon here now that I'm starting to recuperate a little bit. Hopefully tomorrow I can do that as well. God bless you and thank you for listening.